<laughs> a smile at the camera. I have no idea if everything is set up right because I start a little bit late. So let's look right at the light. Okay, so today we are going to play around with WordPress. And I lost the window that I was working on. How much want to bet that I like closed it? Oh. Alrighty, let's see. Anywho, this is going to be fun because there. Trying to make sure I can see the chat as well as what I'm doing on WordPress. Good times. I need to stop looking at the light. Anywho, hello Ron Kincaid, how's it going? Um, trying to remember what thing I have here. Sound is off. My sound is off? Like, can you not hear me? Hello? Hello, Domain? So is, I can hear you, but timed wrong. Hmm. That I don't know what I can do with, because uh, I've been fighting Xfinity all day. So I don't know what to do to fix that. Uh oh. Sorry to interrupt, but I gotta, you're talking. Mm -hmm. No, your sound, 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 sound. Then you're talking. Oh. Then sounds out so. so. Can hear we can hear you here. <laughs> Everybody says they can hear me. We can hear you with just it's moving and um, off. I don't know what to do about that. So it looks like uh, we're doing the whole uh, dubbed Chinese movie thing going. Actually, came on just at the right time for me, at least right on. So I don't know how to fix the sound. It's going to be annoying. So I don't know. Should we try? God, I don't want to end it and then start again because it's going to create a whole new instance. Um, hmm. I don't know. Well, I guess we can try it. And uh, if it gets too much for y'all, let me know. And then we'll just put an end to it and try it again. You're good. We hear you. Awesome. All right, so I'm trying to figure out which, which one I had here. Um, that's YouTube gameplay, extra life. I got like all these different scenes and oh yes, I can't remember which one I was using. How to? Oh, let's try the how to. Oh, definitely not it. Okay, let's try that, uh, let's see. Damn it. Can you pause? Um, no, all I have is an end stream button. Um, I wonder if I stop streaming from OBS if that would screw things up with uh, YouTube. Let's try it. <laughs> Experiment time. Okay, so I'm going to stop streaming and then I'm going to start again. Let's see what happens. Okay, so. I start it back up. Okay, so I don't know if that's any better. If not, then I guess we'll just have to muddle through and it gets uh, if it gets too annoying, let me know. Then we'll just chalk it up to yay day. Maybe we'll do it next Monday. But I can't remember which one I was doing. Let's try uh Oh, I think it's this one actually. Okay, so let's try to look at our screen here. Uh, the wrong button. There we go. Ah, look at that. Let's make it wide. There we go. Let's fix this down here. And boom. Okay, and then turn off that one and turn on that one. There, that works. Okay, so, um, well, Apparently Sam, who's in the next room over, my friend, she says that um, it's like a, a dubbed Chinese movie where my lips are moving and then a few seconds later you hear sound. So, I don't know if that fixed it. 
Um, if you guys are, if everybody else is okay, then maybe Sam needs to reboot her phone or her computer or whatever. Okay, so what we got here is we have politically or practically living green, and we're going to work on setting it up some more. Um, the last videos I did on it, we installed all the really cool plugins. I got WordFence and a few others. Maybe it's my video. I'll try to restart. Ah, okay. But with our plugins, we had, um, we didn't activate the Kismet. I added Buy Me a Coffee. I hadn't turned it on yet. The Classic Editor, not sure if I want to use it. Google Analytics, we uh, use that to connect to Google. Jetpack, all this other good stuff. So these are kind of like the basic ones that I install on every website right off the bat. Um, you don't have to use these. I like them. Yoast SEO is awesome. Hey, if you've seen any of my videos or read any of my content, I'm a big fan of Yoast. I have the pro version on Rider Sanctuary and Crossing Colorado, I believe. And I might have it for Colorado Plays. I can't remember if I bought it for that one or not. But if this turns out to be good, I'll probably wind up buying into the pro version of this one too. It's really cool. I plan on doing a uh, review of the pro version of Yoast at a later date. It has an awesome function to it. Uh, the word count is... Uh, that's more of just me keeping track of who wrote what for this website because we're going to be sharing the money between myself and my son and whoever else helps us write content. WordFence, obviously, backup. Uh, Updraft Plus. I like Updraft Plus because it will um, save your backups directly to your Dropbox account, which is great. I uh, like my Dropbox. Tiny MC Advanced adds more functions to your um, editor. So it like turns WordPress into a um, full-fledged word processor. I mean, you can add all kinds of fun stuff to it. You can change the buttons around and get rid of stuff that you don't use. Short Codes Ultimate has a lot of cool fun stuff in it, like making buttons, tabbed content inside your posts. Um, got just some big, it's like 80 things that it does. So it's, it's going to be worthwhile. Search and replace. Um, I use that to search for any instance of anything that's in all of your blog posts. So a big thing I ran into recently is that I was using a short code for showing ads in Writer Sanctuary, but I changed what platform I was using because uh, what I was using went outdated. They haven't updated in like two years and it's dangerous to have a plugin that old on your system. So I went ahead and wiped it out and I installed a new one, but the short code was different. So I had to search for all the short codes for all of those ads. And when you have like almost 500 posts, that's kind of tedious. So using search and replace, you can find just that short code and replace it with the new one. It was like that fast. Really simple SSL is connecting your SSL to um, WordPress. If you use, not to be, not to sound too much like an ad, but if you use Green Geeks, you don't really need simple SSL because it's already attached to your um, domain. So you don't need to install a plugin. It'll automatically feed through it. Um, but I installed it anyway because it doesn't hurt and it just gives it that much more protection, I guess. I don't know. Just a habit mostly. Jetpack has a bunch of stuff I'm going to use. So anyway, those are all the different plugins I installed last time. So what we're going to do is I'm not too keen on how the website looks. So let's take a look here. See, it's it's kind of plain, obviously, because I haven't anything anything to it. But the design for it is, uh, I don't know. We'd have to mess around with it a lot more than I really want to. So I think for now. I'm going to disable it and I'm going to add a new theme. So we're going to go into themes here. And we're going to use one that I know works great because I have it on two other two other blogs. And we're going to look for I see my keyboard. Color mag. Color. Really? Mag. There we go. I like this theme. Um, it comes with a ton of cool um widgets that you can add to the blog post uh, you can do all kinds of stuff it has its uh um oh my mind just went blank as you can see with this is kind of like the preview of what it is now obviously i don't have any content on the site so it's kind of blah but you can turn it into this here and uh it does have a 
built-in image gallery, um, the carousel. Then you can add um, different content here. You can add all kinds of cool widgets. Um, we'll go over that later on, but it comes with a ton of cool stuff. So we're going to activate that. Okay, so nope. This theme recommends the following plugins, but I don't want to use any of those plugins. So I'm going to dismiss that notice because I use different content or a contact form builder. So, all right, we don't need to worry about that either. Okay, now uh, we don't need Jetpack. We have backups through Updraft. Okay, so now we have Color Mag activated. So this is what it's going to look like. And kind of plain and boring. There's absolutely nothing. We've got the sample page. Woo! But we don't want it green. Uh, this is blue. So we're going to change the color. Uh, we don't want the background. Where is the. Ba -ba 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 additional category options. Category color settings. Well, we can set category colors. We're not, not going to worry about that just yet. Because we would need content before we change the colors why I don't want the background where's the design options I hate it when they change things um skin color I wonder oh dark really ooh that's kind of cool practically living blue right <laughs> that wouldn't really fit with what we're trying to do but yeah well that's kind of cool I've never seen that must be new um, I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty cool. All right, but we still need primary color. There we go. Uh, we're gonna go with let's see. How about that one? That one looks kind of a foresty green. And then from here, we can change pretty much any color we want. We can make it go gray, deep green, teal. I like teal. I like teal and purple. Okay, so we're gonna go with let's go with that for now that works we're gonna hit publish and then we're gonna close this because everything else is gonna be done on the other side so let's take a look at its widgets this theme is really cool this is why I use it um, you have well first off you got the right sidebar which comes default with a lot of plugins or uh, themes now every theme is going to be different depending on the developer Sometimes you won't have sidebars at all. It just depends on how they designed it, how they set it up. This one has a right, left header. You got your front page slider area. That's where the carousel is. You got the area beside the slider, which is what those four articles were um, on the page I showed you at the demo. Then you got the content top section. You got the middle, and you got the middle right. So you can like break down. I mean, it's pretty in depth with all the different things you can do. It's pretty pretty flexible. I'm probably not going to use most of these. I'll probably use the footers for different things, but um, you can take away the or change the sidebar on the error 404 page if you ever need it, which is kind of handy if you have a 404 error. That way people know that your site is actually still alive and just missing content. We'll go over that later. Uh, contact page sidebar. Oh, that's. I wonder if that's from. Uh, I wonder if that's from the theme or the plugin. So I added a, added a jetpack and WordPress, the newest version of WordPress added a bunch of other stuff to it too. So I don't know, I'll have to look. All right, anyway. Then widget wise, you get the TG. All the TG stuff comes with the theme grill color mag. And I think uh, pretty much all of the theme grill themes, at least ones I've seen that are free, have uh, a TG um, widget. So this one's a 125 one by 125 advertisement banner. And you can either select which one you want to add it to. Or you can drag and drop it. But we're not going to worry about that because we don't have any ads to show anyway. Um, then you got 300 by 250, 728 by 90. Um, that's usually reserved for the area at the very top of the page next to the logo and all that. That we're probably going to have to customize the CSS. Now, I don't know if they fixed it, but before I had to adjust the CSS uh, manually to make it uh, to where if you put in like something like Google Ads or a 728 by 90, it would shift the uh, name of the site down. 
and it would like make this big huge gap it looked horrible on desktop so i had to go through and change some of the uh I'll put in custom css to make it all even and fix it so hopefully they fixed that um they did do an update recently so we'll find out now here's the things that i care about it's the featured categories now you got two different types or one two three you got four different things for content here now with these you can drag drag one over and we're going to put it in the uh, let's do top section we drop it in there so from here we get to show four um blog posts out of um, four blog posts and then we can choose to either do it as the latest post or from a specific category now if we add other specific categories, you can change them here but we don't have any yet i was hoping that it would have showed the uh, layout because some of them have different layouts um Try to remember where it was shown. I haven't really had to mess with it for like a long time. But that is not what I wanted to do. <sighs> oh, there we go. So like this one here, featured post style too. Um, you can have it set up like this, where there has the big banner at the top, and then the thumbnails of the other kind of, uh, content below it. Now this is for like the home page when you're looking at it uh, to organize all your different articles. Um, I prefer this one. That's where it's on the left, and then you have the ones on the right, the small ones. Now, if you've seen, what's a good one? Um, MichaelBrockbank.com, Crossing Colorado, and Colorado Plays all use the Color Mag theme because I'm boring, I guess, like that. But it has everything I want, so whatever. But that's how I, I like mine. But you can pick whatever you like. I just prefer it laid out that way. Um, actually, since I am here, here I'll show you what it looks like. Let's go to um, Colorado. Oh, let's do Colorado, please. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like. You've got the four big articles on one side and then four on the other, and then the layout. That I was just showing you is this here. So you have the bigger article on the left and the four, uh, five smaller ones on the on the right that just have titles. Now I can go through and change that to where it shows the title and the snippet, um, but or not snippet the um, excerpt. But I don't need the excerpt on the smaller ones, just the big one. I try to get it to where it's even. And see here, I can change what category. So right now I have this one here is showing what the latest post. And then this one is pulling from a category Gamify Fitness. So, and then on the right, we have all of our different things we can add to it. But that's, this is a uh, color my right here. And I'm going to add a little bit more flair to it eventually. That's been a really long couple of months. So, that's what I'm going to try to do with this one, except I want to add more pizzazz to it, make it stand out more. So, I think I'm going to leave that. There for now. Latest post. The same thing kind of here. Well, it's new. So anytime I write a blog post, it's going to automatically feed onto the home page in this format. So I want to save it. And then eventually when I start getting categories, I'll probably do the same thing where I'll add another one of these down below it and then add the most prominent category to the home page. But most of your con most of your uh, Google searches. Most people ain't going to see your homepage. It's going to be specific articles that they're looking for. But you still kind of want your homepage to look nice because, well, that's how a lot of people get to your site. But it doesn't have as much of an impact as it used to. At least I haven't on my side. Okay, so there's that. Now the fun part, Let's see that. Oh, now we got it looking different. So let's go to its customize. Let's see what else we can do. Um, we have nothing in the what's new. Oh, the search bar. I uh, don't like the way that's laid out. I wonder. Ah, in WordPress, down here on the bottom left. Make sure you can see me. Okay, you've got desktop, tablet, phone view. So you can simulate what your website looks like on across different devices. So like this is what it would look like on a phone. 
kind of bland, but it is what it is. There's nothing on it. Obviously, it's going to be bland. I don't remember that being so large, though. Then we can select a logo, and I probably will develop a logo eventually. Oh, and we need a site icon. Um, oh, yeah. There's a plugin that I want to put in that'll turn any image that you upload into the website's favicon, which is that little graphic that's on the top left of your browser window. Like with this one is a little planet crossing our Colorado place has the CP um, logo with the Colorado flag in it. But yeah, it's a really cool plugin. We'll have to play around with it later. I just can't remember offhand exactly which one it is. Okay, so. Social options, options. See, this is why I have so many jump cuts in my normal videos. Active social links area. Here is where we can put in, like, if we had Facebook for it, Twitter, we can put in Google Plus. <laughs> they haven't taken that out. Google Plus has been gone for a long time. Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And I was thinking about starting a Instagram, Instagram and Pinterest account for Writer Sanctuary, but it really don't. I mean, what do I take pictures of? WordPress. <laughs> off my desktop yeah. but so like if let's say that we want to do twitter what if, do we have to do the whole url oh see it's not showing it maybe we just need wow i haven't used that twitter account in forever um what if we need the ad maybe just how about if i spell right Twitter sanctuary not showing it Hmm. Maybe the at. Oh, click to open a new tab. And. Oh, weird. It's not. It should be shown right right up here. Both header and footer. Click to activate. Huh? How about you turn it on? There we go. But anyway, <laughs> that's where that goes. But I'm not going to worry about that because I don't have any of these quite yet. I'm going to be setting them up eventually. Soon, as soon as we get some content going on, because right now it'd be kind of pointless. Let's share a blank page. Okay, so we have that going. Let's say we wanted to set up a new, we gotta set up the about and contact pages. So what I wanna do is add a new page. Rip. <laughs> and let's see. Let's see, what if we do, oh, we gotta do an about. I guess us, instead, maybe there's gonna be more than one of us. Um, I'm just gonna write in some uh, default text for now, just so we can see where the page is gonna be. Um, what's a good, something that's not stupid. Um, What if Treehugger needs a hyphen? <laughs> Good enough for now. now that's going to offend somebody. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, publish this. I will go through and change it and make it real, but right now I just needed something up so that we can see where all the stuff goes. So we're going to hit publish. God, this is Gutenberg. I am so anti Gutenberg. They did a lot of fixing since. Uh, since it came out in 5.0 and WordPress 5. Yeah, I really wasn't thrilled about Gutenberg at all in the slightest, but it's almost a, a usable system. I just, for me, it's faster for me to type um, text and then insert the code manually. So like at the text ed editor for the original classic editor, I can just rip through that really fast. This, you have to open up different uh, blocks and add blocks it's just it's adding extra steps that i don't need it just makes me makes me irritated so hit publish are you ready post and now we have an about us page you page yay okay so it automatically added it now i'm going to go back and get rid of that sample page because we don't need it i didn't want that Okay, so we're going to go to sample page and trash it. Goodbye. Privacy policy. I need to 
do that. Did I ever? Oh, see, this is all. Oh, this is default. This is built into WordPress. Oh, that's kind of kind of handy. It's a template that you have to go through and fill in your own information, which is handy. But I will have to do that later. Right now, we just don't have a lot going on, so um, that means it's set to automatically add. So what I want to do is. I remember where is the uh, I don't know lighting. Nope. I can't go on that one because that's private information. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, first off, let's check our permanent links. I think I already did that in one of the other older videos. So what we have is uh, we changed the post name to where it would be the website and then the title of the post. Now we do that because we don't necessarily want to show the dates of some of the posts because a lot of people will see something that was written back in like 2016 in the slug and then think it's outdated and so they won't visit it. Even though, even if you um, revamp the article this year, a lot of people just see that 2016 in the slug and they're in the URL and just not worry about it. They won't click it. So if we get rid of all that and just go with the post name, I would go by um, category, but I don't really necessarily want to do that. And then you can also customize everything. See, so you, you can have a custom structure completely. You can put it in the year, month, day, hour, minute. That's a little uh, excessive, I think, but. It's there if you want it in category. I might, uh, I don't know, maybe category and then the post name, but that wouldn't be too long. People wouldn't read it. So, so I'll keep it as that, which is good. Let's see, what other page? Oh, we need a contact page. We have to go through and stop it from automatically adding. Form to come soon. And post. Sneaky. I look at the year of everything I read, right? <laughs> so do I. Which is why I know that most, a lot of people, I can't say most, but a lot of people will not read something if it's too old. <laughs> which is something I need to do for, I need to uh, set up Briar Sanctuary and all the other, the, all three of them, I think. I'm going to change the URL. The problem is that once you change the permalink and you decide that you want to try something different, it will break. Your site will break every one of those links. So you have to create 301 to re redirect so that, <clears throat> so that like if somebody searches something in Google, it doesn't get a 404 error. Now we'll, I'll go through and show you how to do that in a later video because it's a little bit more in, a little bit more in depth than what we're doing today. But that is definitely one we'll have to do. And I will do that directly on Rider Sanctuary so you can actually watch me change all the URLs with 301 so that we can get rid of the dates. So, anyway, now we got an about us and a contact us. So, if we go to customize, this is what it looks like now. It's adding them automatically to the top. So, it doesn't have a home page. Wonder why. So, what we're going to do is go to where is it? Appearance, menus. Okay, so from here, we can add more stuff to the menu that's already there. Um, we already have that. How come it's not showing the home though? Oh, weird. I wonder if we go to a different page. Let's try that. Okay, so if we, oh, there's no, eh. there's no icon for it. Why? I might have to turn it on. Uh, been so long since so I've actually set up Color Mac from the very beginning. Um, I think it might be on the actual um, customize. Let's see. Okay, uh, home page settings. Your latest post act page. We don't want that. Oh, yeah, we, we're good. Um, where is your options? 
search icon. Oh. Primary menu. Ah, so you can add search. I think that's why I did it on one of the other blogs. I think I got rid of the search widget. They didn't like it there. You know what? We're going to do that. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of remove. Okay, so what I did there is in the customizer, you see all these little blue pencils, and you can edit any one of these other elements. And if you click on it, it'll take you straight to the function on the left. So if I wanted to change, um, say I want to change this uh, flavor text here. I hit click on that, it takes me straight to identity and the tagline. So, header and text only, say icon. Uh, God, I want to do that. Of course, I don't really have an image for what I'm doing with practically the living green yet. I'm thinking about using a tree. But who knows? Anyway. So that's how you edit those pieces if you're in the customizer. You can click on any one of these elements. Um, I want to get the home page. There's a way to turn on. There's an icon that will appear in the headline. Header, show, show home. There you go. Bonk. That's a problem with uh, going through all these different themes is that no two theme developers are ever the same. Sometimes they'll have the same kind of settings, but for the most part, everybody has their own style of what they're doing. So it takes a little bit of digging to find specific things you want to change. Oh, sticky me. Oh. Search icon. Yeah, I did that. Random post. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the color mags added a whole bunch of stuff to it since last time I messed around in the customizer. Because once you customize your website how you like it, you really don't have any reason to go into it. Except for to make minor adjustments if you want something to look different. And I really, once I get a certain way of how I'm doing it, I kind of just forget about it and just write content. So, one of these days I'll have to go through and change stuff. Oh, look at that. Choose the main total header area display type that you want. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, oh God, no. All right, so we'll do, we'll keep it up here. I like that one. This one goes all the way across the screen. So. Um, show date uh, the, uh, from WordPress date setting. Theme default. Um. I don't want to, well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make a difference to show the date on the green website. Because on I do it on Writer Sanctuary. And then I have uh, Breaking News on Colorado Plays, I think. And Breaking News will just take the most. Um, the one I have set up is that it'll show the five most recent articles that I wrote. And those show up on every page that anybody goes to. So... Even if they don't go to the home page or don't see anything on the right side of the um, website, the date and the breaking news will always show. And I think I have that on Rider Sanctuary too. Don't know if anybody ever uses it, but it's there. You know what? We're going to go ahead and leave it. Save that. Okay. Close that out. Mm -kidooky. All right, so now, where are we at? Color mag options. That same. I wonder if that's the same as the customizer. Oh, oh, learn the basics. These, this is kind of cool to have. Um, that's how I learned the specific um, image dimensions that work perfect for color mag. I had to go through their documentation. So it's worth it, even with a free theme, to go through and glance through it because you'll get things like the perfect size of images to use for uh, carousels. Um, where to find certain things in the theme itself. So it's worthwhile. Probably at least give it a once over. Theme editor. We don't need to worry about that yet. Okay, so. Alrighty, I think. Oh, well. Let's take a look at it one more time to make sure we got it. God, I don't like the size of that. Is there any way to make it smaller? I'm probably going to have to do it in CSS. Uh, I don't think it's that big in 
Oh, I guess it is. All right. Never mind. But you're going to make it complicated when I add banners up here to the right. So I probably, because of the name of the website so long, don't know if I'll be able to put ads over here unless I use a smaller size, which I can do. That kind of cuts out a banner. So I don't know. We'll have to mess around with it. Plus, we're also using it on the, uh, uh, with the customizer on the left. So if I hit hide controls, it's a little bit more realistic. I'll be able to hide a banner here, or not hide, but show a banner here. And on mobile devices, it'll shift this banner underneath the title. So like if I did, bonk, it would show up underneath here. And then here's the footer. I'll probably add some brief information links in here somewhere for stuff. But we are just getting it all nice and spiffy. So I don't like the way that's titled. So what do we do if we have an about us and a contact us, but we don't want the entire title to show on the menu because it'll take the title of your page and show the whole thing. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is go to the menus. And we are going to, why isn't it showing me? There you are. So like with the about us, if we expand it, we can go in and change the label. So we just hit about. And we'll do the same thing with contact. There. This doesn't change the page name. It just changes the, changes the link that's in the nav menu. So we hit uh, I'll probably have to do a custom one. But what we'll do is hit create menu. We're going to leave it as menu one so that I remember. Save. Um, display location. We want it in the, I believe it's primary. We don't want it to add new. This is what I was talking about, where anytime you created a page, it added to it. We don't want that. So we're going to leave, the, we're going to leave this unchecked. Check the primary menu and then hit save. Now, when we go to our customize, there we go. Now we have about contact. I don't like the text though, so I'm gonna get rid of home because we have the home icon already there. So what we'll do is remove. There we go. We hit save again. There. Now we have a menu as the house or the home icon, about and contact. And eventually we'll add more pages to it. I'll probably do a category selection uh, navigation to it. But for now, that's good. All right, so let's create a post so we can see what it looks like on the homepage. We're gonna hit add new. You can also, oops, I wanted to show you real fast. Now there's two ways you can add an article or add a post. You can hover over it. Like say if we're in the dashboard. So if we have posts, we can just hit add new from here, or we can go click on posts and then add new or add new. So there's like three ways you can add a new post. So um this is a test. Are the emergency? Ah. Of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Okay, anyway, so now we need an image. Um, oh God, you can tell that I have so much experience using Gutenberg. The reason why I'm using Gutenberg is because if you're following along building your own website, this is probably what you're using. Uh, CSS, text color. Well, that's kind of cool. You can change the color of my text. There's a lot of cool, fun stuff that Gutenberg does. I you know I should give it a shot since it's, they've changed a lot of stuff to it. So it might be worthwhile to me, but I don't know. I just put my baby to sleep. Do you have to, do you have to own the domain? Um, for your website? Yeah, this is for self-hosting. Self and so what I've done here is I'm using Green Geeks' web so, uh, hosting service. So this is saved on Green Geeks, and then you get a domain name. And if this is your 
With Green Geeks, if you buy the domain or web hosting, then you get a domain for free for a year. And then you connect it through that. And I think in the first video I showed uh, setting up the domain name. And so for self hosting, yeah. Um, unless somebody else buys it for you. But it's only like uh, $15.99 a year. That's 16 bucks. This is, isn't there a plugin that replaces Gutenberg? Yep, it is the classic editor. <laughs> and I have the classic editor installed, but I wanted to show everybody how to use uh, Gutenberg, even though they changed it on my document. There we go, featured image. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I think I added this one before, because I was messing around with it, a rough week. Now I use, I'll always use an alt text. And description of your image um, that's one of the search rate uh, search engine factors when they're ranking so you want to tell Google what it's about and uh, you want to make it kind of related to what the image is as long as it's also related to the topic that you're creating so this is a rough week and we're just going to delete this anyway so what I am saying is in order to monetize it you have to on the domain um, let's see if you're it depends on how you're monetizing like if you use Google Adsense or other affiliate systems like ShareASale or CJ.com then yeah you have to own the domain um, I'm not sure how far you can monetize with something like WordPress.com which is a free system um, I don't know if you can monetize WordPress.com at all actually in fact most free systems have um, heavy restrictions on what you can monetize but if you're going through affiliates like we're going to do with this website and AdSense, then yeah, you definitely need to own the web, the uh, domain name. And I connected practically, practically Living Green is now connected to my Google account so that I can sign up with AdSense. But AdSense requires a certain amount of content before they'll authorize it. So with having no content on your site, you can't show any ads. So that's the only reason why I haven't set that up yet. Now, same with affiliates. If you sign up with an affiliate platform and you have no content, they'll, they'll deny it. But to answer your question, yeah, uh, for most ways that you monetize, you'll have to own the domain. So we're going to hit Featured Image. So now we got our Mr. Psychopath here. And this is a test, so we'll hit Publish. Ding, publish. Okay, so now, now let's take a look at the website. Um, oh, do it this way. Visit site. Michael, do you ever use ClickBank? ClickBank for your affiliate offers. I did. Um, I think you brought up Click uh, ClickBank before, and I signed up with them, but I was in the process of moving back in February, and so I had to go through and contact them and get them to change everything. So they authorized my account, even though. When you sign up, it has to match your your IP address has to match where you're match where you're located. And so I told them I'm going to be moving, so should I just wait? And they said no, just contact us later. So I went ahead and did all that. So I am now authorized to be on ClickBank. So I'm kind of excited to see what that kind of stuff holds. Okay, cool. I already have a domain name. Thanks. Awesome. I've got too many. <laughs> well, I can't say. Well, I guess I have too many. I have well, including this one, I've Five blogs now. I have Michael Brockbank. I've got the three that I use, and then Practical Living Green. So, and this one here is the experiment. We're just trying to see if we can turn this. How quickly, quickly we can turn this into a money maker, which is kind of a bummer because I wanted it to be way beyond this point when I first started. But with the between the pandemic going on, getting evicted from the rental, and then having to spend a month and a half trying to get into my house, um, I just haven't had a chance to get into it. So. Hopefully we can turn this into a money maker soon. So anyway, this is what the what's new looks like. We have the that, and then if we had any more articles, it'd show on the right. And then I don't like how it is showing up the newest articles here. So what we'll do is go back. I don't. This is the new version of WordPress. Yeah, I get it. That's not what I wanted to do though. Um, the, the I think it's customized. Okay, so we don't want that. So, how do we remove? Is there a 
There's no option to remove it. Okay, so we're going to home page settings. Nope, it's not going to let us do that that way. Okay, it's post. Um, what did I do for? I'm trying to remember how I have it set up for the other one. I don't like how it does the new posts in large. I can't remember if there was a setting for it here or not. What I can do though is um the if uh Rider Sanctuary how it nope Rider Sanctuary is different theme. Um all right. Why do I have to log into it? I'm already logged into it. Okay. Plugins. Not plugins. Here, there we go. Is this? Is this on a home page or? Oh, it's the latest post as well. And why is it showing it? Okay. It's not doing it on this one. Hmm. God, I wish I remember how I did that. Page settings. Ha! Ah, there we go. Like, you can get lost with uh, some of these themes. Oh, bitch. There we go. So now I can add more stuff and it'll show it on the right, just like uh I don't know why I did that. Oh, there it is. Boom. Just like this one. So this is kind of what I want to do. I don't know if I'll do this though. Like the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the lazy loading plugin that I have with shifting images all the way down, it would grab all five, but then it would put such a huge gap of whiteness here. So I took out the gallery so that uh, I could just show articles and they've made a lot of changes since then. So I might go back to doing it because I kind of like the automatic um, flow of it. But anyway, so yeah, there is that. And also, oh, let's see, I can add, that's right. Quit showing me the freaking yes i get it it updated woohoo stop already that was slack telling me that somebody needs my help it is way past helping time so anyway um i just derailed my train what was i doing oh my god we were looking at oh okay um Wanted to go through and see on the top section here. Okay, description. That's what I look for. Oops. Okay, so I can make the description as long as I want, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. And then we're going to go back and see what it looks like. Cool. Yay. Okay, archives um, and categories. I haven't had luck with using either one of these. I don't think I've ever seen anybody on any of my sites use either one of these things here. I do like top 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for add new. Look for the top 10. There we go. I love this plugin. So we hit install now. Activate. Okay, well now what that does is it adds an ability to track the most the top most viewed content on your website. So with this we can check it either overall or daily. You can cache, we can change how often it caches. Um start the daily counts at midnight, which is what I normally do anyway. Because if you've seen, I think I have it on Writer Sanctuary. 
Okay, Colorado Place has what's trending today. That's what this is. This is breaking down the most popular articles on this blog, um, ranked from, well, best to least, the top 10. Days, I'm going to do it one day at a time because I kind of like doing it that way. Um, and we have all these different options. Delete options on install. Yeah. Delete counter data on un uninstall. I'm going to check that only because I like to keep my database clean. So once it's gone, it deletes all the information. Limited meta box on add to admins only. Link to top 10 plugin page. Yeah, if I was nice, I would, but I'm not. So there. Okay. So. Save our changes. Now let's counter and tracker. Display number of views on posts, pages. We'll add. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to care about the posts and pages on this one. What to display when visit? There are no visits. No visits yet. Okay. Format to display to the, the post views. So we got total count and daily count visits. I'll show you where those are going. Uh, format post count. Leave that. Always play latest count. Track type. Uh, I'll a square load tracker on all pages. No. Okay, and then the rest of this is yeah. Most of the time, a lot of the settings you'll probably wind up keeping as default. You can always fine tune it and change it to fit however you like. Post list. Okay, we're going to show 10. You can change it. It's called top 10, so 10 is the default. But you can change it to all kinds of different numbers. Um, post types, we're going to include pages. Um, attachments would include things like uh, images, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, we're not going to worry about excluding categories. So if there's categories that you didn't want to show in the top 10, then you can add them in here. Um, heading of posts, we'll leave that because we want to be changing. We're only going to be using this on the uh, widget, so we're going to leave all of these default. We're not going to worry about showing the post excerpt, but just the title. We don't want to. Care. We don't care about the date of the author because we're trying to fit it into that small section on the right. So that's the only reason why I haven't done any of those. But we're going to leave it like that. I can't remember if I did anything, so I'll hit save. But no, we don't care about, you can show thumbnails if you'd like, but I'm trying to streamline it to make it easier to read. And adding thumbnails would just make it too big on the right. So styles. You can change the different styles, so you can do text only. You can have left thumbnails, so it looks like this. Um, uh, I guess it'd be kind of cool, but that means if I'm doing a top 10, the list would be super long and we don't want people to scroll any longer than they absolutely have to and if you have any skill with custom css or with css you can add some custom css here to change it to whatever you'd like you can do things like changing color um, with css you can do uh, image transitions and fading and gradients and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with css um yeah so we're not gonna worry about any of that so now we've got our Default settings. So what we're going to do is go to appearance, go to widgets. We're going to go ahead and drag. Where is the? What's the top ten? Because once you once we added the um, plugin, it added a widget, I believe. Oh, there we go. It's this one. Top dot dot dot. So if my screen was wider, it'd probably show me that it says top ten. I wonder if I can. Oop! That is. Oh, wow. Random clicking. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> That's what we're going to work. Nope, it's not. Oh, there we go. So now we can see that it says top 10. So these two widgets here came with that plugin that we just installed. But we want the popular posts. So I'm going to grab it and drag it to the right sidebar. And we're going to throw it above the archive. We're going to say what's trending today. Um, we'll do the ellipses. Number of posts, we're going to show 10. We're not going to offset it as it should be centered on the widget. Um, we're going to leave 
enter below. So we want this to be inside of one day. Oops. You can also set it to show popular within five hours, but with a brand new blog, uh, it'd be kind of pointless. So in fact, one day is probably pointless, but what's trending today? Uh, we're not going to worry about showing the count, excerpt, author. Now, all of these will override the settings that you put, so you can change them however you like. Uh, no thumbnails, don't care. Post types include, we're going to do post and page, and we'll hit save. Now, with top 10, it comes with a short code they can put into a, a page and do it that way. Okay, so now we have that done. Let's take a look at our, don't like that view. Um, I can hear my cat in the other room. All right, let's take a look at the website. So what's trending today? There's nothing there because nobody's actually visited this site yet or the page. But like, it's not gonna record me because I'm the admin, but if anybody visited it, it would show up on the right. Okay, that's cool. Alrighty, so let's see if we can do the uh, carousel. Oh, that's why I keep hitting WordPress. Okay, dashboard at least. Let's do a widget. We're going to throw it into the carousel. So we're looking for featured category posts or highlighted. I think it's nope, highlighted is a small one if I remember right. Because one of them. Is the carousel? Um, I think featured posts. So we're gonna drag feature post over to the slider area. Bonk. Um, we're gonna use uncategorized for now, only because I want to see if it's uh, the slider. Oh well, it, that's definitely not it. That's post style one. Um, was it highlighted? Can't remember. And I removed it off the other one because it screwed up. So slider area. Yeah. So post category. We're only doing this just so we can see if that's what um that's where it's at. So Brunk. No, that is not the slider. Alright, so toss that. Where it was under is TG, but it might not be. Featured post, featured post, featured category. I don't know where the uh, which one has the what it's this is the one that's built in, but I wonder. No, we don't want a gallery per se. What the slider does is it shows the articles that you have. I'm just trying to remember which one is the uh, We just highlighted post, right? Oh, which will be used as the slider, you idiot. Maybe you should read it. Okay, scroll up and plunk it down. Say and categorize for now. Now it should show. Bam. Yep, there we go. So if I had more images here, it would start uh, cycling through. So what we'll do is just so that we can see it work. Let's go ahead and create another post. This is another test. That is not proper proper capitalization of his title, but oh well. This is another test. We're gonna go to document, add a featured image, um, upload. Let's see, find a uh, one of mine from. That worked. Oh, you know what? If we use mine, site work, copy, please. We'll just use one of these header images because I already know they're the right size. Um, God, I gotta change. Got too much junk. Oh, there we go. How about we do. Um, Where's the one I did today? Where is the 
Hold on, let me find it. Ah, there we go. Yeah, using content mails. Set featured image. <laughs> and publish. One good thing about the Gutenberg editor is when you hit publish, um, there's like a verification. Are you sure you want to publish this? But the old editor doesn't. So when you hit publish, it's up. All right. God, see, I don't like it. When you start adding too much, um, too many things to a smaller screen, it'll squish the title. So what we can do is we can use the screen options. We can take off the date because we don't need that. Um, I don't care about total views. See, in total views and today's views were added by top 10. So we can go ahead and take those off if we want, but I'm going to leave today's views on, but I'm going to get rid of regular views out going. This is from Yoast, so we'll leave that. And you can see it's already starting to fix itself. Tags I'm going to leave only because I like to add tags, and if something doesn't have tags, I like to go through and make sure it does. I need the categories. Stats is quick and easy to get to, and then comments, obviously. So that looks good. Cool thing is that you don't need to hit apply with screen options. You could, um, mostly for list view and excerpt view. But when you're changing the columns, it'll save it automatically. Okay, so anyway, now we've got two published. So if we go to the website, and it's reload. Boom. And it'll show the newest one. It's not. There we go. Now it's. Oops. It was starting to carousel. So now, after a few seconds, it rotates the image. It'll take the top whatever. I think it's set to top five. Oh, look. This is a test. It's been accessed. All right. So now. Let's go to back into our widgets and the, where's the slider through this? All right, so um, we can show four. So we can show as many as we want. Four is a good number. Um, you can change what category it comes from. So yeah. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and so now, yeah, now we got the layout going. That's kind of like how we want it to look. Um, reload, go back home. Alrighty, and then we're going to put in the different categories here. Probably, I'm going to do a lot of reviews on this one. So I'll probably put the reviews on the right here so they're more prominent. And probably under here. And the reviews are going to be mostly uh, affiliate linked. And then later on, we'll be, be building some landing pages for our ads. And uh, I don't know if we'll add those to the nav bar. Landing pages are pretty much just your, like if you use AdWords and uh, social media marketing, the landing page is the link that people click on and go straight to your website. It's a landing page. It doesn't really need. A way to get to it from and within, within the content. It'll be crawled by Google just fine, but we don't want to add a list of landing pages because we're going to do quite a few landing pages for the different products we're going to support on our green page. All right, so um, what else can we do real quick? It's been an hour. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, contact us. <laughs> that was me. So it is recording my my access. Archives. I don't want archives and categories we'll leave, but the archives we don't. So let's go ahead and remove archives. Now it's really easy to get rid of something in the right sidebar. Just drag and drop it right off. Boom, it's gone. And reconnection successful. Okay, so OBS said it disconnected, then reconnected. So I have no idea. What kind of impact that makes. So I am having a hell of a time with my internet today. All right, so 
before we call it a night for now, is there anything you guys would like to look at while we're setting things up here in WordPress? Because we've got all kinds of fun stuff we can do. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and remove those posts because I'll be adding new uh, real content here shortly. And I don't want Google to um, I don't want Google to add these to our website. So I'll click on that. Bulk actions. Move to trash. Hit apply. And they're gone. Make sure you don't miss out on traffic. Um, I, I wasn't trying to get traffic on those. That's Yoast telling you that if you delete articles, that's really bad. Unless you build a 301 redirect. But we won't be doing that on this. I'll be doing a 301 redirect on Rise Sanctuary. I don't know. I've got another video idea that I wanted to do on Wednesday. But I don't know if I'll do that this week. But in the near future. Um, what else can we play around with real fast? Um, is there anything else plugin wise that we want? Let's see. Um, eventually I'm going to activate the Kismet because it does a really good job against spam. Um, depends on if you're going to, if you're going to use uh, comments on your blog posts, I would suggest using discuss. Uh, we'll set that up because we're going to be using it and you can set discuss up to Log in with Facebook, I believe. So, um, hmm, I think that is about where we're going. Buddy Press is really cool. We're going to be also probably not on this one, but I'm thinking about setting up a uh, a social hub on Writer Sanctuary. So it's kind of like a Facebook for writers, I guess. But I don't know. We'll see if if there's a lot of interest for it, then maybe I will. I would just like to have a central hub for people who need help with like freelance writing or textbook or WordPress or anything else I cover. <laughs> so I think that is about end. So on the dashboard, oh hey, here's something we can do. Improve your site's performance and speed. So Jetpack used to have a thing called Photon and this is what that tool is. They moved the, they changed the name of it. What Photon does, is that it will take all your images they upload, store it on their CDN, and then when somebody accesses it, they throw out the WebP images if their device supports it. Now, what WebP is, is it's images specifically designed for mobile devices. So it loads up a lot faster than, uh, than JPEG. Problem is that not every browser supports WebP. And you can get WebP plugins for WordPress, um, but I've been having a hard time getting them to work right with my caching tools. And so I've had to disable WebP on one website and had to change a caching site, a caching tool on another one. It's just, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And you can get a WebP extension for Photoshop, which is what I was using, using, but it just didn't work right. The images weren't showing up and it's been a, it's been kind of a mess, but if Jetpack can automatically deliver those images for you, then it speeds up the loading of your website. So we're gonna go ahead and hit activate on this one. It's activated. So now when I upload images, it gets stored by Jetpack on their CDN and they convert it for me, which is kind of cool. And it doesn't cost anything. Now with Jetpack, you have to sign up with a wordpress.com account, but I find wordpress.com, it's free. I found it useful because like this tool right here, the uh, stats um, that you get with Jetpack, they work a little bit better than Google Analytics, be mostly because it focuses more on organic traffic and Google will sometimes collect all kinds of bots. Now bots can affect Jetpack and I've seen it happen before, but I kind of like the stats on Jetpack and it comes with a ton of tools in uh, WordPress.com. So when you go to it, you can see the different uh, different articles that comes up, like this one here. Really? Two views from Google Search. See, it's already being searched. Unfortunately, I'd have to get go. I would have to go to Search Console to actually see what people are putting in that makes this website come up, which is kind of odd considering there's nothing on it. That might have been me recently to see if it shows up. 
I don't know. Apple, Apple page. <laughs> I was hit twice. <laughs> nice. Yesterday. And I know that wasn't me, so. Does Jetpack give you the keywords visitors use to find your website? Um, I don't know. Let's check. I can't remember. I know they give you some of them. Um, this is my, this is my stats page for WordPress.com. I've got seven sites connected to it. Way too many. So let's take a look at, um, well, let's take a look at practically living green. Okay. So we have, yeah, see, it's not showing. The search terms were not recorded. Now that'll happen quite a bit. Um, even in Google, not every search term is going to be recorded. Depends on security settings people might have. Um, I think incognito mode prevents it. Um, like with Edge, it's called, what is it? Privacy mode or something like that. In private viewing or in private. So not all search terms will see, but let's take a look at something more popular. Okay, search terms. So these are the ones that were known. You got buy me a coffee scam. And do I need to cite my sources in Textbooker? And I know I've had a lot more than that. But that was just for today. Ah, my traffic is all over the map. So what we're going to do is take a look by month. And then this will show us all the different terms that are recorded. So textbook, textbook are the first test. Uh, trials, articles, example. 300 words writing sample. Got a lot of, a lot of textbook or stuff. And all the different links that people click on. Refers is kind of cool because it shows me where people are coming from. So most visitors are coming from search engines, obviously. We got Google, Bing, and Yahoo. <laughs> right on. Myway.com. Uh, okay. However they find me is fine. YouTube. So 30 of the people visiting my blog came from YouTube. 7 from WordPress. Then I got 5 from the Android app. Ecosia.org. Uh, Ecosia, if you don't know, is a search engine that donates money to grow trees. Um, Kindlepreneur. That's, oh, wow. So someone who read my Smashwords review and got to me from Kindle. That's new. Buy me a coffee. Right on. Uh, Keep.google.com. This is uh, Google's Keep service where you can keep articles to read for later. And then Paulo Amoroso is a um, somebody I met through, um, I think it was Buy Me a Coffee article. And a uh, really cool guy. Has a good blog up. So I go to his site quite often. He links to me. So I've got two visits from him. So that's kind of cool. It breaks down the different countries people visit from, your most popular pages. And you can break it down by how many visitors, how many people liked your content. So like. I got more likes in January. Um, you can have it set up for, oh, the insights is pretty cool. So if you hit insights, you can see these are all the different days that I post, that I published on Writer Sanctuary. You can see that I kind of turned up the heat in January. February kind of pittered out, but that's because I was in the middle of being homeless. And then it shows you uh, the amount of traffic you get and the darker areas are your most popular months. So April and May. You can see that I've been growing constantly. This month, and I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if I want to break any records this month. I'm kind of pittering out. Of course, you have to write constant content. So, and I'm not the most reliable when it comes to publishing posts. Um, I got 46 followers on WordPress.com, 250 followers total on social media. I think that's also including uh, Twitter. And now, oh, see, that's not including YouTube though. I think it's Twitter and Facebook are connected. I think LinkedIn. Uh, today, it's been five days since I posted my last one. It has six views. Ooh. Then it'll break down your most popular day by hour or day and hour. So, like Tuesdays are the most popular time to publish at 1 p.m. Unfortunately, I shifted my publishing to Mondays and Wednesdays. So, I want to see. Uh, See if that makes a difference because a lot of people do read my stuff on Tuesdays, which is weird, but it is what it is. Annual site stats. So in 2020, 38 posts I've written so far, eight total comments, 26 likes, one average like per post. 
Total words, 60,159. I write 1,500 words per post. And you can hit view all to see everything. So you got total post, comments, um, comments per post, average likes per post, total words, average words. So it's, uh, you see from 2012, and then I just kind of grew as time went on. Um, what else do we got? Oh, from WordPress.com, I can also I can write content directly to the post or to the blog. I can make changes to my blog. So, like, if I wanted to create um, pages on the site, I can create one right here. It shows me all the pages that I've got. So I can take control of my blog from WordPress.com. So like design, I can open up the customizer. So it looks just like the customizer from Rider Sanctuary. Blunk. Almost looks too messy. Might do some. I don't know if I like the icons. I might change these and put like bigger ones on the right, or maybe floating ones. I think. I think floating ones would be better. So I close that. I should go back to uh, WordPress.com. Oh, it didn't. Eh, well, we can just go back this way because I have a bookmark. Ooh. Um. Okay. And then uh, what else can we do? manage my settings i can i can go directly to the wordpress admin uh, i can manage people the uh, users on my website so if i wanted to add a new author i could cool thing about doing it this way is that the wordpress.com app um, works fairly decent so if like you're on the move and you need to do something on your blog sometimes it's easier to do it from the app now you can use wordpress the admin screen on wordpress from your smartphone and it works fairly well I just find some things to be easier to use the WordPress.com app, um, aside from the mobile version of your dashboard, because it, it it's handy. You wouldn't want to write a blog post from it, but okay. So from our dashboard, like if uh, I usually leave my dashboard open all day long, because if I get an idea about a blog post, I can just put it in a title. Like say that I want to do one on our socket meters which is going to be something i want to do soon i can just hit save draft and it'll save the draft as a post that i want to work on for later so if i come up with ideas i can write titles or put in content sometimes i'll put in links to websites that i want to check out or do a review on and then i just hit save draft and it saves it so when i'm ready to go to it i can either click on it from here and that'll open up the editor or i can go to posts and it'll show me in the draft so at any point I can go back and work on them and it'll show you up to three at a time so like if we wanted to do BP oil for C's end of oil which is a real article that recently a BP is um, set to lose like 17 and a half billion dollars because of a uh, well with the coronavirus going around, most economies are getting, being kickstarted back with uh, renewable energy. And so oil is taking up pounding. So eventually I'd like to do that one. So I'll hit save draft. And I would have the, uh, the link to the article that I read. I think, I can't remember if it was CNN or the uh, New York Times. I can't remember which. It was a major news thing, but really cool um the end of oil but anyway that's how quick draft works you can crack down really quick ideas um like i can be working on something like say if i'm working on colorado plays i'm like oh wait i remember something i want to do that's green and just do that and hit save draft um the wordpress events and news is really cool it's based on your location of your wordpress installation so when you install wordpress you can tell uh, you can set up the settings, your date and time, and I'm set up for Denver, obviously. So there's WordCamp Denver, which is coming up. Oh, right. Mm, next week, or in uh, two weeks. Which is a bummer. I went to WordPress Denver last year. It was a lot of fun. Won't be able to do that this year. Actually, I was going to 
um, sign up to be a speaker, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have internet. The cutoff date happened three days before I was guaranteed to have internet. So don't get to speak at it this year. So hopefully next year I'll try for WordCamp Denver. And then you have the WordPress happiness, WordPress happiness hour at Denver Library. Everything is starting to kind of open up. That's kind of tentative. Um, I was out to Costco today. I wore my mask, but there I saw a couple of people out there that weren't wearing them. So I don't know what's going on. Boulder WordPress meetup. Topic to be announced. Word, Boulder's kind of a far away though. Anyway, this is... <laughs> off, got off on a tangent. WordPress events and news. They'll show you everything that's in your local area, including um, blog updates to WordPress. So if you're ever interested in any of that, WordFence will add a widget to your um, dashboard. And so will SEO. Yoast will show you um, how many articles you have posted, which ones need key phrases, and which ones have a bad readability. And you can go through and fix those. Exact metrics is. Uh, it kind of does the same thing that um, Jetpack does here, but I don't like how Exact Metrics does it now. It used to be Google Analytics and uh, for the dashboard, and I used it to connect um, Google Analytics code to my website, but I don't like some of the stuff that's in Exact Metrics. Personal preference, they work fine. I just don't like the layout. Health status is relatively new to WordPress. If you uh, if you want to check out your site health, you just hit the health screen here. And it should load. Give you some ideas on what to fix and where you need some adjustment. Like here, I should move in, remove inactive plugins. I've got three that I know of. Um, inactive themes. I'm going to go through and remove some of those. Your site running an old version of PHP, which should be updated. Um, the newest version of PHP just came out recently, so I'm not sure if my settings in Green Geeks are up to date with the newest version. I probably have to go through and change it. Sometimes it changes, they usually change it automatically when it's a, not a beta but an actual um, live version. One of more recommended modules is missing. Really? Optional module, Imagic. See, I don't care about Imagic though. We're using manual UA code output. Now this is from exact metrics, if I remember right. Yeah. Okay, but I'm already authenticated. I don't care about that. An error occur while checking whether your site can be found in search engines. Uh, probably because I don't have any content. <laughs> oh, and I did have a curl error. I have to figure that out. Anyway, past all the everything else. Anywho, so there's no activity, obviously. Um, at a glance, um, this is how much content you have running. I don't care about that. So if there's anything that on here that you don't like, you can always hit screen options and get rid of exact metrics at a glance. Um, quick draft and those. Okay, so I want to leave those. And then I can move them around how I want. I'm going to move. Let's do daily popular posts. Move that up here so I can see it. So I can drag and drop however you like. Now on a full scribe, full sized screen, you should have three columns. But since I do it at the smaller um, size for the YouTube video uh, in OBS, I can. Well, I only have two columns here. And I can move them how I around how I like. But I think that is. About it. And then you got Jetpack. Now, Jetpack does come with a lot of modules and a lot of things you don't really need to install plugins for if you're using Jetpack. So, like, if we go to the settings, and we have down downtime monitoring, which means we can get an alert in time the website goes down, which is good to know. But for the most part, most web host companies are at 99.99% uptime. That's default. I mean. So it's really, I guess it's good to know if you got like a really popular website and you want to make sure that everything is running smoothly, then send you an alert if it's not. Auto update plugins. You can set up um, all your plugins to be automatically updated through Jetpack. And that takes you to WordPress.com where you can control which ones get updated. Andy as hell. 
brute force attack protection, I have this disabled because I use a um, word fence. Word fence has a built in. Uh, WordPress.com login. I don't need to worry about that because I don't have any other users aside from myself that uses WordPress.com. It's just me and my son, and he's going to have a regular login for the blog. And you have performance, which shows uh, the site accelerator, which is I turned that on earlier. That was with the uh, um, that was for the uh, photon. Now this is lazy loading images. This is where I was screwing up before, but I think they fixed it. So I should have tested that before I got rid of those two articles. But oh well. Um, I might turn it back on depending on if they fix it or not. So we'll have to test it out when I start writing content. So writing display images in full screen carousel gallery. I don't need to use that because um, the home page has a carousel already. Composing, enable the option to copy entire posts and pages, including tags and settings. Don't like doing that. Write posts or pages in plain text markdown syntax. That I might turn on. <laughs> Just late text markup. Composing and short codes to embed media from popular sites. I don't like I don't like um, scraping content from other sites. I'll I'll sometimes I'll quote a website and then link to it, but I don't like um, showing entire posts. If there's nothing wrong with it, um, a lot of people will say thank you because you're essentially giving them exposure, but for the most part, I don't like doing that. Uh, testimonials, I don't have any testimonials because I don't sell anything. Uh, the portfolio, I don't think we're going to be using a portfolio because, well, it's a blog about living green. I guess I can do images of like farming and stuff. I don't know. We'll see. The whole purpose of the website, of this website, is the, to show that you don't have to be left or right leaning um, minded to see the benefits of living greener. It's like with uh, incandescent bulbs. Now, now you can buy incandescent bulbs again. I never will because A, over time, they are way more expensive. They use far more energy and they burn out way faster. So. It just makes sense to use LEDs. So, I don't know. But that's part of what the whole premise behind the blog is. So, um, let's see. Enhanced SSS customization panel. Don't really... Don't know if I'm going to need that. Widgets. Oh, another thing is if you ever come across something that you don't know what it does, don't click it. Instead... There's the I button over here for um, Jetpack. And if you click on it, it gives you a little bit more information. Adds options of CSS preprocessor use, deciding the theme CSS or custom image width. You can also le learn more and read the privacy information. So in Jetpack, it's always best if you don't know exactly 100% what something does, it's best to read it. Post by email. Now when you have when you have, uh, I think it's REST API, XML RPC. If you have that enabled, um, you can essentially email your website a blog post from your email and it'll publish it. Now, some people will turn that off because there are some security risks with using XML RPC, but um, a lot of the other tools use it. So something like that, you want to be kind of careful with. Um, Go through and if you're not sure if you use it it's best just to leave it disabled just to keep yourself safe wordpress.com toolbar i can add the wordpress.com toolbar to the top if i wanted to but i don't because i usually just bookmark it and i check it like maybe once a month twice a month depends okay sharing you got publicized connections now i use publicize a lot with jetpack it's connected to twitter facebook and linkedin right now and Fortunately, unfortunately, for some reason, LinkedIn isn't connecting right, so I have to figure that out. LinkedIn's always been a problem. But whenever I hit publish from Writer Sanctuary, it gets sent to Twitter and Facebook immediately. So you'd go through and change, uh, you can change what the, the tweet or the Facebook message says in on your blog post. And we'll go over that when we start writing content. But it's really handy because then you can start 
letting people, letting your fans know that you got new content up and it's ready to go. So it just takes a step out. You can use, I use Buffer a lot too. And what Buffer does is it connects to the same systems, but you can schedule all kinds of different times to post whatever. So it's kind of like having Buffer built into WordPress, but Buffer has far more tools. It's still handy. I still use it. Sharing buttons. Um, the sharing buttons are the little gray ones that are on. Let me see if I can find a post here. Let's do Ko-Fi. Should have it here at the bottom. Okay, here you go. These are the share buttons that come with um, Facebook, Facebook, Jetpack. So anybody can hit Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. You can add more to it if you have them. Um, I'm thinking about changing these though because they're, like I said, not used. I think people are more accustomed to the brighter, more fun, oh, here they are, images. Like this, uh, with it being stuck loading. Oh, I did do a tutorial on how to fix that. It's on Rider Sanctuary, but I can't remember what it was because it was like two years ago. So I have to read it again to figure out how to fix it. It's a simple fix. I just haven't done it yet because I've been stupid busy. See, and this one uses. I can't remember if I'm using Discuss on Colorado Plays or not, but this is the comment section I was telling you about. Right now I'm logged in on, that's Gravatar, so I'm logged into uh, WordPress. Can't remember if I have it on this or not, though. Hmm. But I did have a Kismet on this, on this one. But anyway, those are the sharing buttons. Like buttons, it'll have a like button there you just click on. That's probably why I don't get a lot of likes on my website. <laughs> <laughs> I need to fix it. Oopsies. All right. I'll add that to my ever growing list of stuff I need to fix. Discussion. You got uh, let visitors use WordPress.com, Twitter, Facebook, Google. Uh, Jetpack does something similar to discuss. They can use any one of their accounts here to log into it. Alrighty. Good night, Ron. I think I'm going to wrap it up too. So I just wanted to kind of go over some of the things that are in Jetpack. Let visitors subscribe. Um, you can turn on your gravatars, enable comment likes, traffic, related posts. Related posts is kind of cool because then it shows content that's related to the stuff that people are using. And you should do the short links, which I'm going to turn on. And what that does is that instead of having the big long URL that we did before, you can get the short link directly from WordPress and it'll be wp.me and then a string. So it's like much smaller. And I use those a lot in social media. Sitemaps, I don't use those because Yoast does it for me. And site verification, I did do the site verification with Google. And we did that in a video recently. And I can do it for Bing, Pinterest, and Yandex. And I might do it for Bing, but right now, I don't know. Bing just, whatever. <laughs> Not a big fan of Bing. Okay, anywho. So now that you sat through an hour and a half of boring stuff, <laughs> I know I had a much better idea of what I was going to do tonight, but it's been one of those days. So but I think we are at a point where we can start creating content. So that's the, that's the most, most important thing. And we'll probably add a few more things I'll do videos on, but, or like the, uh, the author bio, I'll do a video on that. But I think we're about ready to start writing some content so we can start getting monetized. That's going to be fun. But that's, uh, that's setting it all up. We have lots of stuff here. so. But WordPress isn't all that difficult to learn. It's a pretty easy system. Um, there's a lot to it. But a lot of things you're probably never going to use. So, well, I can't say that because you might. The basic part of WordPress, I've seen some ads where it makes it look like some kind of big, ugly monster. It's not. It's really easy. All I got to do now is just, if I want to create content, hit add new and write, add some images, good to go. For the most part, when you start doing settings and setting stuff up, you only have to touch it once. Anywho, I think that's going to wrap it up tonight. Um, Sorry if uh, about the sound quality or. If it wasn't what you were expecting, I had a lot more going, but oh well. And again, I cannot remember. Um, 
which one to turn off first. So I guess I will hit the stop streaming button on OBS and see if that does it. So, because it did it earlier. Anyway, have a good evening, everybody, and I will see you on Wednesday. Okay, so I don't know if that worked or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit end stream on the screen <laughs> and see what happens. So have a good evening. I'll see you on Wednesday.